Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. If you're new here, welcome, and I hope you'll consider hitting that big red subscribe button so you can join our amazing crafting family. For our first project, we'll be using two of the small standing wooden crosses, five of the Tumbling Tower game blocks, some Waverly white chalk paint, and also some lavender some lavender flowers and i got these at walmart for 97 cents the little set of my first book of prayers i'm going to be making a little book holder but you can also use this as a napkin holder some jute twine and then our glue gun scissors sanding block some e6000 and some pliers or wire cutters or both and the first thing we're gonna do is get our crosses ready. And I wanna take off the front piece that's on here. It's really cute the way it is, and I've used these before, and I'm actually gonna be using this piece in another DIY later on. But I just used my Cricut spatula and kind of wedged it in between wherever there was a space. This is held down by some glue as well as some staples or kind of nails without heads. So I had to use my pliers to pull those out. And so then I'm going to use my sanding block to get that nice and smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is actually going to be on the inside of our little stand. So it's not going to really show unless the books are out, but we want to make it to where if you do see it, it still looks pretty. So I'm going to take my lavender Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to add some of the white to it to give it this yummy lavender beautiful light color and I'm just going to paint the entire cross and I'll do both of those including all of the sides and the base as well. I'm also going to be painting all five of the Jenga pieces. You don't have to paint the sides like I did here, but you do need to paint the tops of all of them and then one long side on two of the blocks. Once I got everything painted and dried, I'm going to take my sanding block and distress all the edges of my two crosses. I didn't do the inside because again, it's not going to show that much, but I did want the outside pieces to be pretty well sanded and the good thing is that these start out as brown so that's what color is going to show through once I get that sanded all the way down. Now I'm going to take three of these little lavender sprigs and I'm going to hot glue those to the bottom of the cross and then I'm going to put my jute twine around it so that it holds it in place. So I got that ready because when I get the hot glue in there once I tie it around the bottom that'll help push it into place and then I just tied it into a sweet little bow and cut off the excess jute twine. So now to assemble it all, I used my E6000 for a super good permanent hold as well as my hot glue for the immediate hold and just attached all of the Jenga blocks together and made sure that the outside blocks were the painted sides 
for the front and the back. There was also a little piece that I had to paint because it was still the raw wood towards the back because it doesn't match up equally, but it doesn't matter because it's still gonna be cute and you won't even see that. So after I got those all five together, then I'm going to do the same thing on the sides and attach it to the crosses. So then I just added my books and it was done. And I think for a dollar a piece, these books are super adorable. And it was the whole set. And I was so excited to find all four. But you can also use this as a napkin holder. So if you don't happen to have a granddaughter that is getting ready to receive her first Holy Communion next month, use it as a napkin holder and it is super cute. I'll show you that in a second. But I place this next to my little bird cage that I made in a prior DIY and I'll link that video down below if you're interested but I just love how this turned out and it was super easy and I, I think just really adorable. So I wanted to show you while I was working away in my craft room, my Michael J was working away in our dining room, putting up some shiplap. So I will show you the results of that once he gets it done. Um, probably not by the end of this video, but I am so excited and can't wait till it's completely finished. So for our next project, we're going to be using some of these wooden beads that I got from Amazon and I'll link that in the description box below. Some jute twine and then the top part of our cross. So the first thing I did was got all the cruds off of the back of the cross and I'm going to sand this down and make it nice. This will be the back, but again, we want to make sure that everything is pretty no matter where you look. And then you guys remember my sweet new drill that Michael J got me from Home Depot. I don't know if you're interested in this, but it sure comes in handy. And he tried to get it in pink, but they didn't have one. So I will link this in the description box below. I have no idea what, oh, it's a uh, Milwaukee. Okay, well, I'll link it down below somewhere and once I find out. But all I did was put a hole at the top and then I'm going to use that to string my jute twine through. So now I'm going to take my beads and I just put them on a skewer so that it would be easier to paint. And for these I just went with the darker lavender and just left whatever white paint was on my brush so they were kind of blended and shaded in areas. So after I got done painting my beads, I painted my cross and gave it kind of a shaded effect as well.
So now I'm going to thread my beads and in order to get the jute twine to go through the hole of the beads I have to make a little needle using some scotch tape. So I just wrapped that around and cut the end at an angle and then fed it first through my cross and then I'm going to take a purple bead and then three natural wood ones and then another purple bead and feed it through the one side of the jute twine and then I'm going to go back and do the same thing with the other side and feed that side through as well. Then on one side of the jute twine I'll do 10 of the natural wood and one of the purple and then on the other side I'll do that same thing but I'll do that twice. And then once I get them all on there where it comes together in that section I'll make a sweet little bow and cut off the excess jute twine. So I'm making a rosary obviously but if you don't want to make it into a rosary you can just do the natural wood beads and make it into a beaded garland. And then I'm going to take my sanding block and distress the edges and get it all nice and roughed up. And then I'm going to take a white paint pen and I'm going to write at the top INRI, which means Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And so that'll be at the top. And then at the first crossbar, I'm going to write Jesus. Now, it didn't work out the first time and my paint tip is really wide so I didn't space it properly so I just wiped it off which was totally fine because this is paint and it just gave my cross a little white sheen on the top and then just did it again. I decided to change the font though because my granddaughter doesn't probably read cursive writing so I made it in regular. So here it is all done and I love how this turned out and again I'm totally crushing on the lavenders and the soft purples and every shade in between but I love how this looks and this is a good way to recycle a piece that we took the parts apart from our last DIY and got to use it in this project and I hope you guys like it. For our next project we're going to be using this round board sign and some buffalo check ribbon. This I get from Hobby Lobby. I got it at Christmas time for five dollars. A couple of leaves from the lamb's ear that I get from Walmart and then we'll be using the Silhouette Cameo 3 for this and I use Frisco Craft Vinyl. They have the best vinyl. It seems to work the best for me anyway and some magic cover transfer tape from the Dollar Tree and then all of our weeding tools. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my stickers off the back. We'll be using the back for this one and so there's a lot of ways to get the stickers off but in this case it really came off pretty easily if you just go slowly and pull it at a 90 degree angle and it came off without even leaving any kind of residue whatsoever. So then I just took my sanding block and got that all nice and smoothed out. And then I took my painter's tape and just kind of eyeballed where I wanted to make a stripe along the bottom portion of the circle. And even though this is a thin piece of wood, I made sure that when I wrapped it around that my tape was even with the line so that when I paint the stripe itself it's going to have a straight line going around the edges 
So then I used my ruler and measured two and a half inches between the two pieces and then made sure that those were really down and tight and no paint would seep under the edge of the tape. So then I did a couple of coats of the Waverly White chalk paint in between those two pieces of painter's tape. And then once that was completely dry, I took the tape and placed it on top of the white and then painted the top and bottom in a super, super light lavender. And I just had mostly white paint and just added a little bit of the lavender chalk paint. So while that was drying, I went to my Silhouette Cameo 3 and cut out the words, the tomb was empty. And for this, I used the font, the skinny for the tomb. And then for was empty, I used hand snow. And I love this combination of these fonts. I just, I've used it before and I love, love, love it. But I just cut the words out and then pulled off the vinyl and then weeded out the letters and then I'll take my transfer tape and put that over on top of the whole thing and I always reuse my transfer tape and it actually gets better with each time you use it <laughs> so then I wanted to take my tape off and this is my favorite part of any painting project and this came out really good because the lines were perfect and crisp and super super straight so that was a good thing so then i took my decal and cut the lines apart so that i could apply them separately and just used my squeegee to transfer the letters onto the transfer tape and then just put the tomb up towards the top left of the stripe and then using my squeegee pushed it down and it goes on there so easily and then took my second line and put that in the middle of the white stripe. And one thing I've learned about pulling off the backing paper from my decal is that if you just keep it flat against itself, it comes off a lot easier. And then also when you're pulling the transfer tape up, if you do it in like a zigzag motion, that keeps any of the vinyl from peeling up. So now for the top of the sign, I'm going to make a bow and I'm just doing three loops on each side using the fold over method. And so I actually had another bow that I had already made from a previous project and didn't use. And so I made this one a little bit too big. So I ended up using the other one, but I thought I would still show you how to make it. So I just gathered it in the middle after finding the center and then wrapped a chenille stem around it and then pull your loops left to right and then one kind of in the center and do it on both sides. And then you wanna dovetail your tails by folding them in half and cutting them at an angle. And then I took that whole thing after cutting off the excess chenille stem and I'm gonna hot glue that right to the top of the sign. And then I took a couple of lamb's ear leaves and put two on each side and just glued those in place. And then to hang it, you could put this on a plate holder or you can hang it. And so I did it both ways, but I put a piece of jute twine on the back and using hot glue, I just made sure that they were 
the equal distance away from each other uh, as far as where the curve of the circle is so that it would hang straight. And so here it is, and I am absolutely in love with this. I think it's probably one of the most simple projects, but those seem to be <laughs> some of my favorites and don't take very much time, but end up looking so stinking pretty. So I think this is perfect for Easter and just kind of conveys the entire message of what Easter is all about. For our next project, we're going to be using a 14 inch wire wreath form. This egg shaped Easter blessing sign. I was really excited to find this. And then some beautiful purpley flowers. I have some plumerias and some pansies from Dollar Tree. And then the lavender and boxwood is from Walmart, and those are 97 cents each. And then some paddle wire and for some reason I couldn't find my green paddle wire floral wire so I had to use this and then some burlap ribbon and some grow grain purple ribbon and so the first thing I did was start cutting apart my boxwood because that's going to be the foundation of this wreath so it was easier to work with if they were just single stems and so I started wiring these down using my paddle wire and the green wire was a little bit too flimsy and thin so I was having trouble with that. So I end up using the silver wire unfortunately which will show in some spaces so if you can use your green floral wire that would be much better. So I'm just going to go all the way around and make sure that I'm covering up as much of the wire form as possible. You won't be able to cover it all without spending a fortune, but it's okay because we're going to have some other flowers that will go over it as well and that will cover more of it up. So after I got all of the greenery down, then I started putting in my purple flowers here and there and because my boxwood was pretty full at this point I was able to just hot glue some of these flowers into that greenery. I didn't do anything as much at the bottom because that's where I'm going to put my bow or kind of to the side. I think this might be one of those times when I should just be quiet and let you guys watch and listen to the beautiful music.
So now I'm going to make the bow and I decided I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I took my purple grow grain ribbon and hot glued that to the top of the burlap ribbon just to give it a little bit of interest. So I just went down the whole way with my hot glue and laid a bead on there and just put the ribbon right on top and smoothed it out with my hand. And then once I got done with that, I made my bow and I used a different method than the fold over. I don't know what you would call this, but it's a rollover method, I guess. And so I just rolled it over onto itself three times. And I really think I should have done four because I have to go back and end up adding a little bit more. So I roll it over and then I get the middle by folding it in half. And then I made little snips so that when I put my chenille stem around it, you can move the loops around a lot easier. So now I'm going to add just the middle part of this sign and I love how it's got some of the lavenders in it and so it works perfectly for this project. And so I'm just going to tuck it into the greenery and attach it using some wire and then just put that through part of the form. And then from the back side I'm going to hot glue on top of the wire form so that it'll kind of seep through onto the back of the sign and then to cover up the hole in the front i just took a pansy and stuck it through and hot glued it so that you couldn't see that and then i'm going to take some more of the purple grow grain ribbon and make another little bow and place that in the middle of the big bow And here it is all done and I think it turned out really really cute. I am in love with the flowers from Dollar Tree and of course Walmart's those are always nice but the Dollar Tree flowers are just on a different level I feel like and the sign that they had with the Easter blessings on it you can't really see the Easter blessings but I think we get the idea from the cross but I love these colors. I love working with these shades of lavender and purple. But I hope you guys like it too.
For our final project, we're going to be using four regular tin cans, a tin magnetic canister, and a mason jar lid, four of these gorgeous lavender candles, and then some more of the lavender from Walmart, some jute twine, and then our Waverly White chalk paint. So the first thing I did was got the adhesive off of the cans and to do that I used my Cricut spatula to get all of the crusty stuff off and then went back in with some Goo Gone and got that all off. After I got them all clean I took the magnet off of the back of the canister and I'm going to use these as lifters so all four of them will be at different heights. Now what I should have done was painted all of the individual pieces first before attaching them because the glue wasn't all the way dry and stuff was falling apart. So note to self, paint first and then attach. I don't know if you noticed, but my Gorilla Glue had a blowout at the top. I had my granddaughter helping me. It was kind of just like a comedy of errors happening on this project. So anyway, once I got all cleaned up, and had to revert to my E6000. I used my hot glue and my E6000 to attach these pieces to each of the lifters. So once all of my lifters were attached, then we started painting and Cadence was excited to help me paint. And in a project like this, when you're dealing with distressing, it doesn't matter what the paint job looks like, although she did do a good job, but we just got the paint on all four of our cans. And then once they dried, we go back in with our sanding block and make some scratches and distressing and get them all nice and rustic looking. So once we got the cans all sanded, I decided I didn't like the ridge where the canisters had met the cans. So to cover that up, I used Old Faithful nautical rope and just hot glued that all the way around each of the bottoms of the cans. Once I got that done, I went in with my lavender stems and just cut a few pieces off and bundled those together and then I'm going to hot glue those to the bottom portion of the cans. This part I definitely needed my little finger protectors and I'll have those linked in the description box below because these will save your fingers for sure. So all I did was hot glue those on and then I'm going to wrap some jute twine around five times and I don't want it to all be on top of each other so I wanted it kind of to go up and down and have some space in between and then just tied a sweet bow on top of the flowers.
And then finally, to keep my candles in place, I took some tacks and just hot glued those to the tops of the cans. And then I placed my candles on top of that. And here they are all done. I can't believe that tin cans could turn out so pretty and they're functional. And these would be really pretty at a wedding, which I happen to have one coming up in November that is in the lavender color palette. So Morgan might be getting some of this goodness at her wedding. So anyway, I really like them and I hope you guys like them too. So here's the entire vignette all put together and my eyes are just so happy looking at these colors and everything in this. I love all of the beautiful lavenders and the message of Easter. I will have this decal in my Etsy shop at White Sparrow Living if you're interested in making this. but. I think everything turned out super cute and I know two of these are gifts for Cadence and I know she'll love them but I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and if you did I would love if you would give it a thumbs up comment and let me know what you think and hit that big subscribe button if you haven't already and the bell so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the love and support. I hope everybody has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.